This is Twit. Hey, um, uh, is uh, what's the status of self-driving cars, Tim? Is are we seeing any advance here? I have to say, having had driven a Tesla now for over a year, year and a half, that's not autopilot. It's no, it's not. It's, uh, it's a nice system, cruise control. It's a nice cruise control. Right, Tesla's was the best for a little while, but they they're not the best any longer right now. I think uh, in terms of what's available to the mass market, GM Super Cruise is the closest thing we have to autonomy. Um, with that in the new Cadillac CT6 and soon coming to other, <clears throat> excuse me, coming to other Cadillacs, uh, you'll be able to actually take your hands off the wheel um, and get on on the highway. So basically on, on designated roads that, that Cadillac knows has mapped in high enough resolution um, and in conditions where the car can actually see the lines in the road, you get on the, the highway, you press a button, and the steering wheel wow. turns uh, blue, and then you can take your hands off the wheel and you are good to go. You still need to pay attention, but you can look away for, I think, upwards of 20 seconds uh, sometimes. Uh, so, you know, you can't be just reading a book or something like that, but the car will take care of itself and do a pretty good job. How does it uh, let you know when you need to pay attention? Like when it's like, hey, hey, hey. The Tesla look like, right. has a whole series of escalating alerts to the sure. point where it actually will slow down. Yeah. Yeah, for Cadillac, it, it, it blinks at you very, very noticeably and uh, sounds a very loud chime as well. So it'll give you a warning. I think it's probably about a 20 or 30 second warning saying we're coming to the end of the road that, that I know how to map. Uh, or for if the conditions are changing, if the weather's bad, suddenly you can't see very well. It'll give you a pretty good warning and, and it'll start to chime. At some point, the car will eventually slow down and stop if you do not respond at some point. So it actually does a pretty good job of the handover. And it has an infrared camera actually watching you as well to make sure that you are paying attention and that you are able to take control of the car back. So this is an expensive option in a high-end Cadillac, but presumably GM's going to migrate it to some of their, will they put it like in the Bolt, for instance? Uh, we should definitely expect to see it across the entire GM line. And Nissan's actually got a really nice system in the Leaf called ProPilot Assist that's not quite that comprehensive. You can't take your hands off the wheel. Uh, but I was speaking with a Nissan engineer in uh, last week in Detroit, actually, and they plan to have uh, Leafs be able to automatically change lanes on their own by, by next year. Wow. And by 2020, they want to have this ProPilot system be able to actually stop automatically at intersections. Uh, right now, if you're behind somebody and that person Ooh. stops, the car will stop and follow them. So it will stop at, at intersections if it can kind of follow somebody else. Uh, but in 2020, they say this system will be good enough to be able to stop at a red light or stop at a stop sign so I was and proceed through all on its own. At CES, hosting a panel about autonomous driving, and Tim helped me prepare for this a lot, but one of the interesting things was that there was a product guy from Nissan on the panel, and his whole platform for autonomous driving was, and it seems like Nissan is actually make, doing this in practice, is it's all going to be incremental. We're not going to just one day wake up and it's going to be like January 1st, 2025, we're all on an autonomous grid. That makes sense. It's He's like a scary thing. We've got to just... Walking you up to it. Yeah. And that's actually a very different approach than a lot of other companies like Waymo, for example, who are jumping right to level four, level five, which is where there's basically no mm -hmm. driver controls. Um, and there's different arguments one way or the other. On one hand, it, it kind of makes sense to be iterative because at that point you can kind of progressively make things better and smarter. But on the other hand, that gray area between, you know, truly driverless and all human driven is actually pretty complicated because now not only do you need to make the car able to drive itself some of the time, but it has to actually watch the driver and hand control back over to the driver. And that is actually really, really complicated to know if I'm paying attention, if I'm in a state where I'm ready to take control of the car back, you know, what's my heart rate? Are my eyes open? Am I drunk? Um, the car needs to figure out all that before it can safely hand control back to you. And that problem right there, if you make a car that's fully driverless, you don't have to worry about that at all. And so that's why we see a lot of companies like Waymo just saying, forget the whole intermediary steps. We're just going to make cars that don't even have steering wheels. And then we won't even have to worry about I doing that. I kind of understand that because one of the problems with this half autonomy is the time it takes for you to kind of readjust to driving. So if you're letting the Tesla mm -hmm. or the Leaf drive or the Cadillac drive, and you suddenly need to take control, unless you've been really paying attention as if paying you were driving exactly, yeah. there's 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 a few seconds to just rock what's going on where am i what's happening yeah. and yeah. that's yeah. enough it's to be more dangerous yeah right? i think it's more dangerous exactly because yeah. you're you're getting used to being in a car and not really paying attention mm -hmm. like that midpoint becomes then when you need to pay attention by the time that th you know milliseconds that it takes for your brain to kind of be fully activated that's a really dangerous set of times. So you should either be paying attention or the car should be able to deal with it. And that midpoint, I think that people end up, you know, we already think that we can, you know, check our cell phone, do this, eat something, chat with this person, sing, dance around in the car, which is already using up a certain amount of our attention. So yeah, yeah I agree with you, Leo. It's kind of one of those 
things where it might be even more dangerous to have but a the, midpoint. The thing I like about the incremental progress is that people still will have to learn how to drive. Because I think there's this sort mm. of weird... Yeah, once it's all self-driving, future. you'll never learn. But right? maybe mm-hmm. you need to. No, and I'm why? not sure why. If there's well, no steering wheel... I think it's going well, to be a long it time. It may be a very long it, time it, until I don't know how to drive a buggy. <laughs> Well, seriously, I can't get a horse really to move fun. in the right direction. That's true, but it, I think it's going to be a very... If, if people only buy new cars every seven years, right. there's going to be this very long transition time where people are still driving. I mean, heck, people are still driving manual transmissions, Hey, we're right? teaching our 15-year-old to drive, of course. Sure, and so you, you want to be able to... Like, I'm driving my old whatever on the highway, and, and, and I get stuck or something happens, I want my, my son to be able to hop up to the front seat and drive. I just feels Wait like a life minute. skill you, you should really have. think about that. Like, what yes. if I have a stroke and my cu- my son has to take over? Like, he's well, your co-pilot. More like, what if he just needs to drive my car? I don't know why. For whatever. For reason. whatever reason. How old is he? He's fourteen now. He's never learning to drive. Actually, this is uh, all moot because I'm I not going to let gonna him say, learn. <laughs> you don't want your son to drive. Trust me, you do not want him to learn how to drive. It's a bad, bad idea. My, we were lucky. My son didn't want to drive till he was eighteen. Hmm. My daughter, fifteen and a half, which is the youngest you can do it in, in uh, California. She's she she's was ready? at DMV. Yeah, she wasted wow. wasted no time. And she's a, by the way, terrible driver. 